Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. It's one of my favorite times of the month where I get to share my most anticipated reads with you guys for one of my favorite months because June is my birthday and yeah, that makes it a good month automatically. Most months I have four or five books that I want to share with you guys, but this month I have seven. It's a great month, like I said. Usual disclaimers apply, these are US publishing dates, they are subject to change, and let's get into it. In publication order first is Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemian. It comes out June 4th from Bowser and Bray. The author is Iranian American and LGBTQIA+. This is YA. It covers three teens during the AIDS crisis in New York City. I think it's set in 1989. There's Reza, who recently immigrated to the US from Iran, and he is struggling with his sexual identity. There's Judy, who loves her gay uncle, who has AIDS, and he volunteers his time with ACT UP in the fight against AIDS, and there's Art, who is the only out and proud kid at their school. Reza and Judy start dating, and it sounds like it's going to make Reza come to terms with his identity, try and figure out what he really wants and who he really wants to be with, and maybe how to break up romantically with Judy while not messing up any of his friendships in the process. It sounds like the book is going to have a serious side, I mean it does take place during the AIDS crisis in New York and what it means to be gay during a time where gay, the only p gay people you see on the TV are dying of AIDS. And at the same time, it sounds like it's going to have some found family, it's going to be some heartwarming stuff, and I'm really curious to see how it turns out. The next book you may have heard of because it's already won some major literary prizes in Australia. It's No Friend But the Mountains by Baruz Buchani, translated by Amin Tofigayan. Jacqueline over at 6 Minutes For Me has a great standalone review of it, and she's Australian, so I'll leave a link to that down below. Buchani is a Kurdish-Iranian journalist. He watched his friends and colleagues being targeted and killed, and so he fled for his life and went to Australia as a refugee. However, Australia has been holding him and many others on Manus Island, which and it puts him in this limbo. He's incarcerated. He can't leave, but he can't enter Australia, and he's been there for five years. He wrote this book about his experience and all this. It's a first-person account, from what I understand, but from on his cell phone. And he sent it to the translator, who translated it from Farsi. I think it's amazing that he's been able to write a book, and he even shot a film while there, all on his cell phone to share the awful experience that he and many others are going through there and to bring attention to it. Again, check out Jacqueline's review if you'd like to learn more about it. On a lighter note, on June 11th from Berkeley, we have Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune by Rosalie Lim. Lim is Filipino-Chinese and lives in Canada. I was lucky enough to receive an ARC from the publisher, and I just started it, so I can't say too much about it, but it's about Natalie. She grew up in Chinatown in San Francisco with her agoraphobic mom, which means that her mom uh, wasn't able to go out into public spaces. She kept herself in the house. And this really affected Natalie growing up because if they ever wanted to eat, she had to like go out and get food and all this other stuff. Her mother didn't like the idea of her daughter leaving and for college and she wanted to be a cook and like go see the world and she was against that but Natalie did it anyway. She has been gone for I think it's like five or seven years now and she gets news that her mother has died and to come home and to take care of her affairs. It turns out she's inherited her grandmother's restaurant. They're on the first floor of the building, and it's going to be about coming back to the food, coming back to the community, whether she's happy to be in this community. She didn't feel like they helped her at all when she was a kid with her agoraphobic mom, and she kind of resents them for that. But at the same time, Chinatown in San Francisco is gentrifying and changing very quickly, and that's playing a part as well. There's going to be a little bit of romance, it sounds like. So, like I said, I just started, and I'll let you know how it goes in a wrap-up soon. The next book I'm just going to mention briefly because it's a reissue. It's The Love Song of Sawyer Bell by Avon Gale. It comes out June 17th from Karina Press. It's own voices LGBTQIA plus rap. Sawyer is a Juilliard violinist and she's not digging it as much as she was hoping and she's supposed to be traveling around with a chamber orchestra this summer but she doesn't want to do that so she ends up auditioning for and getting into a band, a rock band, instead. The band leader is Victoria who goes by Vix 
and they recognize her talent straight off, welcome her into the band, and then they go touring, and then Vixen so you end up falling in love. I read this and I think it was before I started this channel, so I'll link to my review of it down below. It's not perfect, Cousin Catnip. I, going in, I thought it was going to be like a rock band with lots of celebrity and kind of a band that had made it. I wasn't expecting, you know, cramped tour van and kind of grungy motels and playing to half empty crowds, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. It's just not what I was expecting. But even so, I still liked it and I'm very excited for the sequel. There was a bit of drama with the previous publisher, which I will not get into, but it put off the second book in this series indefinitely. So I'm hoping that with Karina now taking over that we'll be able to see that second book soon. I'm looking forward to it. This first one is FF, the second one is going to be MM, and I think it's called The Ballad of Whiskey Jacks. Anyway, if you missed this one the first time around, here's your chance. This next book, I'm surprised I haven't heard anybody talking about it. It's The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. It comes out J January. June 18th from Gallery Books. Kamali was born in Turkey to Iranian parents and has lived all over the world. The book itself takes place in 1953 Iran. Roya is a regular customer at a stationery shop. It's just that wonderful, homey, dust kind of dusty, wonderful place that she likes spending her time there. And the owner, who has a sense for budding romance, introduces her to another regular customer. Baman has a passion for justice and Rumi's poetry, and they quickly end up falling in love. And this is going to start sounding like spoilers, but it's not. This is all in the jacket copy. On the eve of their wedding, they agree to meet in the town square, but Violent erupts because there's a coup d'etat, and she he never comes. And she never sees him again, and she doesn't know what happened to him. So she gives up on him. Fate makes their paths cross 60 years later though, and it brings up questions. Where did he go? Why did he leave? And how was he able to forget her? I'm excited to read this one because I know so little about the history and the period, and it just reeled me in. What's going on here? I want to know. Next we have some nonfiction. The Weather Machine, A Journey Inside the Forecast by Andrew Blum. It comes out June 25th from Echo. I'm interested in this book because it's not about just forecasting today, it's about the history of forecasting weather. How did weather go from something that we observe to something that we can predict? And that obviously is wrapped up in lots of technology stuff as well. It seems like there's going to be a participatory angle where he goes to either very significant or very old weather stations around the country and observes things. He watches a satellite blast off, I think. And he's going to talk about how things are done today and what the next steps of forecasting, what they're hoping to do in the future, which is basically a supercomputer model of the entire atmosphere, which is mind-blowing. I really like weather stuff, especially in high school. I went through like a weather kick. I was a weird kid, so I'm really interested in this one now. The next book is something that I've been excited about for a very long time. It's Evie Drake Starts Over by Linda Holmes. It comes out June 25th from Valentine Books. If you don't know Linda Holmes, she's a writer, she's a critic, she is the host of Pop Culture Happy Hour on NPR, which is a podcast that talks about all things pop culture. Uh, she used to be a recapper for Television Without Pity. I first learned about her through her work on Pop Culture Happy Hour and through the NPR Pop Culture blog, which used to be called Monkey See. I will link to one of her great articles down below that I find myself sending people. Like, once a year, it comes up and I just have to send it, and I don't remember the exact title but it's like the sad fact that we are going to miss nearly everything. Talking about how there's so much good TV and there's so many good books and there's so much great media out there, but it's impossible to see it all. And how do you deal with that? I have followed this book since she was writing it because she has been talking about it on Twitter. I think it started as a NaNoWriMo book. Anyway, to get to the actual book, it's a romance. Evie has been recently widowed and she never leaves the house. Her friends, including her best friend Andy, think it's because of grief, but she doesn't correct them on that. And anyway, Andy invites a childhood friend who's a former major league pitcher up to Maine for the summer because he has a case of the yips. And the yips is when you can't throw straight and there's no good reason for it. So he's going up to Maine to try and cure himself of these yips and he ends up moving into the apartment at the back of Evie's house and they form a truce and they say, okay, you know, I won't ask you about your 
baseball pitching stuff as long and you don't ask me about my deceased husband and they go okay and they end up forming a friendship and more so i'm excited about this for all of the reasons i already said also because from listening to pop culture happy hour i know what linda likes in romance she loves banter and she's so smart and witty i'm sure this is going to be great it's a debut sure but i'm just so excited to finally be able to read it so there we have it, a bumper crop of new releases this month. Are you looking forward to any of these now? Do you know of any other books that I should put on my radar? Just want to gab, it's awesome. Let's talk down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!